either good or bad. And because of this fact that this tree is planted by the rivers of water, it bears fruit in its time with a good fruit and abundant, but again its leaf, its life, it does not wither, it always blossoms. The result is that uh, this kind of man, anything that he does, is prospered by God. On the contrary, the other man which the Word of God describes, he is like a small chaff that the wind drives away. It with the wind withers and it takes it wherever um, the wind wishes. The result is that this is a man that is weak and stable, without fruit, without a blessed life. This is a man that his end is perdition. And his life is in curse. Why? Because this is a way in which a man chooses. And God knows the ways of man. And he discerns the ways of the righteous uh, from the way of the wicked. From the ways of the wicked. So... It is very important since we are in the church of God because Christ has added us. Since the Father has regenerated us unto a living hope to an inheritance that is um, not corrupted, that is eternal and it's kept for us uh, on the last day. And since we are kept with the power of God, we are kept till the end. So there is the power of God that keeps us, keeps us. There is Jesus Christ who, who said to us that I will be with you all the days of your life till the end of the age. There are also the promises of God to the holy people of God. And in abundance, that is, there is the multiple grace of God, but at the same time, there is the course of each man. How does the man conduct in his life? How does the man live in this world? And how does the man stand? So this is what we'll see um, uh, today with the grace of Christ which are the characteristics that bring to man the blessing here on the earth and the eternal life after the end of his life because if the word of God is true and we know that the Word of God is the absolute truth. If the whole Bible is divinely inspired and beneficial, which is something that we know because the Apostle Paul confirms this to us in the New Testament, and if it is unto teaching, so that we may know the will of God that is good, pleasing, and perfect, then it is very important that we may understand in depth these beautiful characteristics which are um, characteristics of humans uh, but again that are uh, presuppositions and characteristics um, of lives of man but these are uh, conditions also of the perfect blessing so I'm reading this first characteristic blessed, blessed is the man who works not who hasn't walked in the counsel of the ungodly that is his walk is in the, go in the path of the godly man. 
He is a godly man. His desire, his counsel is directed through the mystery of godliness which is great and that is the truth of the gospel. He doesn't only have respect but he has a good respect that is he fears the Lord having knowledge of the truth because there are also people who fear God but uh, who are lost because of lack of knowledge. So this one has the knowledge he fears God and he takes care so that he may walk always in the counsel and the desire of those who fear the Lord. And so when a man walks with the fear of God, the first characteristic that he enjoys by God, and the word of God informs us this, is that God teach him his way in which he has to choose. He has teaching. Christ is his teacher and he teaches him because he is godly, because he fears God, because he knows that only Christ can teach him the way in which he should choose. And for this reason, he lives, he walks in the fear of the Lord and he seeks what God promises to him through his word and that is the teaching for the way in which he should choose in his life I would say at any time or in a very serious or less serious um, problems that there would be in a man's life so this is very important brethren that we may fear God because he who fears God takes care, he is careful not to grieve God, not to grieve the Holy Spirit, and not to go astray from the counsels of God, from the walk and from the word of God and from the will of God. And at the same time, first of all, he always asks teaching from the Lord for the way in which he should choose when he, ha he doesn't know what to choose. And the result in the promises of God is that he will dwell in among many goods and his seed will inherit the land. That is, one man brings the blessing since he is a man who fears God and he walks in the counsel of those who are godly. And he knows um, that God in him is ready to teach him the way he should choose and he seeks this way he always walks in the way that Christ teaches him. He doesn't walk in other paths, in other roads. He doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't lose his direction nor his way, uh, nor his mission. For this reason, God will multiply um, goods in his life and his seed will inherit the land of promise, the land of blessing. But even more, what is secret of the Lord, it will be revealed to him. That is, he will have revelations from God. He will have the knowledge of the will of God. He will have the spirit of wisdom and revelation and to um, his knowledge God will always reveal to him since he seek him, seeks him because God becomes a rewarder to those who seek him and he will reveal to him his word as well he will reveal his testament this is a special man only because he walks in the will of of those who are godly and he knows the promises that God gives to those who walk with the fear of God and they walk indeed in the fear of the Lord but God promises to him even more uh, protection angels will surround him and will deliver him and they will lack nothing, those who fear the Lord. 
they will lack um, no good. This is a special man. With this first uh, car nice characteristic that we have just so that is the fear of God who seeks God who wants to walk in the fear of God and he searches through the word of God the promises and the teaching that Christ gives that God gives the word that God gives and by seeking him he walks in them that is he doesn't walk by chance he walks on the tracks of Christ as they are described in the Word of God. May I say this um, even simpler? Lord, I want to fear your name, to fear your presence. I don't want to grieve you. I want to be always in the counsel of the godly. What have you prepared for me? If I want this and seek it, now let me search in the Bible, then I'll find I seek God and I enjoy. This is the Christian who walks in the Word of God. He doesn't read the Word of God with superficiality, but he studies the Word of God. Um, but reverse, how beautiful promises God gives to those who fear his name. To those who fear the Lord, to those who walk and the counsel of those who fear the Lord. How nice promises that these are. First, third. So Lord, I also want to walk in the counsels of those who fear the Lord. And if we go even further to what the Word of God says that our Lord Jesus Christ in the time of His flesh, He was hired because of His godliness. And if we understand that he who um, uh, reveres the name of the Lord, who whom the Lord takes care and hears when he discusses with him, discuss with him, when he discusses with him, he is the one who fears the Lord, which with great attention looks into the perfect law of liberty, so that he may walk in it. I repeat this: that the Christian man does not does not just read the Word of God and that's it. He studies the Word of God so that he may walk according to it, so that he may enjoy all the promises that God has for everyone, for every one of this uh, thing that God wants us to live and walk in it. God has very nice promises for those who do not uh, walk and the counsel of the ungodly who do not walk in the desire of those who in the desires of those who do not fear the Lord and I want to read all these promises indeed I I do this I write them down so that I may study them and I will go and with them to God and I'll ask him Lord make me so so that I may enjoy these things that you promised me. This is uh, what it means to study the word of God. And for this reason the Apostle Paul says, study in these things, abide in these things, and then your progress will be evident to all people. I study not uh, to learn things by heart. I do not care about this, but so that I may learn from within the word of God and walk in this. Of course you tell me, is it possible that we will never walk in the ways of those who are ungodly? No, of course we will make mistakes. But glory be to God because of Christ who has shed his blood for our mistakes and our sins. Even if I have walked according to the counsel of the wicked because I fear God I understand my mistake I go to my uh, uh, room and pray I confess my mistake I repent about mistake I forgive those who have sinned against me because I want my father to forgive my sins as well so that I, 
I'm so that I may be as if I have never walked in the counsel of the ungodly. We could say uh, many more things about those who fear the Lord, but I will leave this up this to you, so that you may look into the perfect law of liberty and find the beautiful promises that God gives to those who want and seek from God to walk in the fear of the Lord. Now, the second characteristic is that he never stood in the path of sinners. He never stood in the path of sinners. The Word of God says that all um, wickedness is an... Uh, all everything that is not lawful every transgression before God the word of God assures us that it is sin on the contrary he reveals to us and he uh, assures us the amazing results of obedience in the word of God when a man obe obeys in the word of God which makes him to stand in the path of the saints and not of the sinners because there is the path of the saints and there is also the path of the sinners there is the path of the people who obey in the word of God completely as all the holy people God and the Bible says that Moses did completely um, the, uh, the Word of God and David did completely the Word of God and especially in the New Testament the holy people of God they did and they do completely the Word of God what does this mean this means that I stand I see the path of holy and righteous people and I stand there. When I see the path of sinners, then I go away. So, um, every lawlessness is sin. And wherever I see transgression in the word of God, then I go away. This is not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to discern transgression and go away. For example, I will say to... Um, a strong examples when I see in a church to say that the uh, body and blood of Christ is a symbol and th that it's not uh, true as it is as the word of God says receive and eat this is the body of Christ drink of it this is the blood of Christ my body and my blood I see it but now I have to make a decision. We will stand on this path of transgression or will it go away? But will I become a fanatic? Now here is a crucial point. Will I become fanatic, strict? I want though to stand on the path of the saints. Amen, brethren. Which do not have any transgression. If I haven't understood something, then I'm forgiven by God. But when God uh, will come because I fear the Lord and He reveals to me His secret things and He reveals to me His testament and I understand it, now I come before this great dilemma. Will I stand in the path of the sinners or will, will I go away? I gave an, uh, ch a church example. I might bring an example about fellowship. I see that in a fellowship there is a transgression, a lawlessness, there is sin. Yes, but they are my friends. Oh, you have to make a decision. What am I going to do? Will I separate myself from them? Why? Because the holy people are separated. So, blessed is the man who ha has never stood in the path of sinners. Yes, but I stood on this path. I, then I repent and I never stand again. I confess again. I go, I bring my mistake before God and I go away. 
This is not an easy thing. And for this tree, this psalm is not for everyone. But I want this psalm to be for all of us. I want this. I want to be a tree planted uh, by the rivers of waters. But this will happen if I continue in the path of the sinners. Then I won't be such a tree. And it won't be God's fault. It will be my fault. But even every transgression is wickedness. When you see wickedness to wrong others, pe other people. When the one wrongs the other. What are you going to do? The word of God says, do not stand in this path. There is a lie, there is a theft, there is um, deception, there is the love of the money. If there is any kind form of wickedness or lawlessness. And I cannot say that I don't see it. Because since I walk in this path of those who fear the Lord that are godly, that what is secret is revealed to me, the testament of God is revealed to me, and I know the lawlessness, the transgression, and the wickedness and sin. And why do I know it? Because God reveals it to me. And... As long as God does not reveal this to me, then I do not have a responsibility. I will be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. But when God will reveal this to me, and I see this clearly, and I have no doubt about it, now I have to make um, uh, a steadfast and se secure, safe decision. Either I want to be a tree planted by the rivers of water and I go away, or I do not care about this so much. Things are not so. This is not for everyone. I can find um, many excuses. Then I abide. I continue in this transgression. Do you continue this transgression and this lawlessness? It's not me who transgressed the word of God. But the word of God does not say so. The word of God says that nor stood in the path of sinners. He doesn't say that he sinned. But he didn't stand in the path of sinners at all. Though in the previous verse it says that he didn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. His counsel was not a counsel of a God of our godliness but of fear of the Lord. But now he speaks about fellowship. He speaks about our life in this world. Now we have to make decisions. And decisions have great results in our life. Our life depends from the decisions that we make. If my uh, our decisions are re by revelations and confirmed by the word of God, then we fear nothing. God will be with us. Christ will be till the end of the age. He will go before us. He will open the way for us. We will enjoy the promises of the one who fears the Lord. And we'll also enjoy the promises of the holy people, that is, of those who are separated from the world. What does it mean to holy? It means that I separate myself. That is, I go away from the world and I attach myself in Christ. I go away from the constitution of this world and my constitution is in heaven. I go away from the ruler of this people and I attach myself to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. These are serious decisions which, brethren, it's not an easy thing to make a mistake. It is very difficult to make a mistake. Why? Because you know, you see, and God reveals to you. So it is very important that I may understand, that I may decide if indeed I want, if indeed and truly I want to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Do you truly want this? This is the path. 
that you should follow. Do you want this so and so? You don't care about it? It doesn't matter. Yes, but that's how is this path. You should have the fear of God to study the Word of God so that you may gain while seeking God all the promises of God which are written for those who fear the Lord and to avoid all the the bad things that are described for the sinners. So this is holiness, this is separation. Neither will I be among those who live in transgression and lawlessness, which is sin, nor with those who live in wickedness, which is sin. And as the New Testament says, do not be partaker um, of, of the sins of others. That is, do not take part in, in others' sins, but separate yourself from them. Even more in the second epistle to the Corinthians, the Apostle Paul says something very serious which has great promises it says go out from among them and separate yourselves and do not touch unclean thing not yours that is yours but go out and separate yourselves and do not touch any unclean thing and then I will accept you do you hear this then if you not separate yourselves then I cannot accept you but only then I will accept you and I will be your father and you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord the Almighty. So the second characteristic of the man who enjoys this special blessing of God to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water is the separation. Do not, uh, do not be put under the same yoke with the unbelievers. The most dangerous unbelievers are in the church. And who are those? These are those who are not genuine in faith. Those who are illegitimate. For this reason the Apostle Paul says, uh, My son Timothy, genuine child of faith, genuine in faith, a genuine brother in faith, not with transgressions that are covered. Oh, it doesn't matter this. Yes, this matters. It matters very much. Transgression is transgression. Transgression is sin. Separate yourself, yourselves from those who transgress and also from those who are in wickedness. From thieves, from liars from frauds, frauders, frauds, from hypocrites, yes, but in the church. Everything, everything exists. And do you know what, what it is? That he might repent and be saved, but you, you are, lo you are lost by having fellowship. Because it says, the Apostle Paul says to those who walk improperly, It's from the epistle to the Thessalonians. The second epistle to the Thessalonians 3, chapter and verse 6. Now he speaks about the brothers in Christ. But we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw the text says to separate yourselves that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and who is this brother who walks disorderly in the church he is the one who do not walk according to the tradition which they received from us, according to the word of God. They are in transgression. 
he does not walk according to the will of God. On the contrary, the Apostle Paul continues and says, For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us, to imitate us. That is the first apostolic church. These are the ones whom you should imitate. The Apostle Paul says, Imitate me. He dares to say, As I imitate Christ. I cannot say this, uh, be imitators of me, because I know uh, my my life. But I can tell uh, to you that I and you become imitators of the apostle of the first apostolic church. That we become imitators of the word of God. And not to walk disorderly, but be separated from them. Go away. So we won't stand in the path of sinners. We don't have um, anything to uh, anything to do there, but we separate ourselves from there. And when we separate ourselves, then God accepts us. This is an amazing thing, brethren. When you separate yourself from sinners that transgress or do wickedness, then God accepts you. And when God accepts you, then He becomes your Father. And when he'll become your father, then I, you, and us become sons and daughters. And we enjoy all the promises of God. Is this an easy thing? No, it's difficult. Because emotion comes in. Logic comes in. And we shouldn't be so harsh. What are we going to do? We shouldn't pretend to be super holy people. No, we don't pretend this. But we don't want to take part um, in others' sins. We pray for them. We consider them to be our brothers. We uh, take care of them as much as we can. But we do not become one with them. We do not become one. Now third characteristic. Is blessed is the man who has not sit in the seat of the scornful. This is a very serious thing. He scorns, he reviles, he mocks others. And the word of God says something very serious. Um, some There are some very serious verses for those who scorn. For example, it says that it's an abomination. Uh, the scornful man, it's an abomination to the Lord. Who is the one who is scornful? He is the one who judges, who condemns, who reviles. And the word of God says, be careful. Lest you sit in the, sa sit in the same table with them and speak with them. Do not sit with the one who judges your brother. Who judges the church. Who reviles the church. Do you go and eat and are merry with him? And indeed it says that the scornful man seeks wisdom and he cannot find it. Do you scorn others? Then you become uh, a fool. Do you know what this means? That you do not have the fear of God. So you have nothing of um, of the things that we spoke till now. Because the beginning um, of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. May God help us, my beloved brethren. Because this is not a funny thing. The scornful man does not um, obey and rebuke. Because he does not have wisdom. And if you teach him, then you become ashamed. In another part, that's what the Bible says. I don't want to sit uh, in the same... On the same table with people who scorn and other people and poor people. All people are creatures of God and God sent his only begotten son to die for them. Who am I to make fun of him? Who am I to underestimate him? Who am I to despise him? Who am I to consider him as nothing 
or insignificant who am I? The scornful man is an abomination. Far be it, my beloved brethren, that we may underestimate, despise, make fun of people which God has created for the kingdom of heaven. Far be it. When God has loved this man so much, this man which you um, underestimate and despise, um, God did not spare his only begotten son, but he sent him down on the earth to become curse for his salvation. Who are you who scorn him and make fun of him and despise him and spit him? And spit to him. Who are you? Don't you fear God? No, they do not fear God. For this reason, they do not have wisdom. The scornful man never learns wisdom. Is not taught, does not accept um, rebuke. Why? Because he has a hard heart. He has a haughty look, a haughty spirit. He can neither forgive nor repent. He consider himself. Um, higher than all the others. The scornful man um, likes to have the f prominent seats. Brethren, we should be away from the seats of the scornful. When you see someone that gossips, go away. You will never become a tree planted by the rivers of water. Does your wife gossip? Then go away, rebuke her. Does your husband uh, gossip, go away and rebuke him. Does the other gossip go away? We do not pretend to be fools when there is someone that is more honorable, honorable because the most honorable is the word of God. We fear the word of God and we obey in him. Because we want, I want, what can I tell you if there is something that I want is to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water? To have fruit, to have leaves, and everything that I may do, God, through prosper it. I want to do something not to be destroyed, but I want to do something and to be built up. And for this reason, I would like to repeat these three characteristics. We should be away from the ungodly and be only with those who fear the Lord. Because the ungodly say, what does it benefit man to obey and minister God? Though those who fear the Lord say, Lord, glory be to your name. And those are that the Lord um, heeds and hears them. And I would like to insist on this, that we study the Word of God not so that we may preach it. This might happen also. But we study the Word of God so that I may w we may walk in it. I want to see the promises and see um, to whom God gives them so that I may become such a man. I want to see the results, the blessed results of the Bible and the and to study and see to whom God gives them so that we may become and we should all become um, such um, people. We should be a church of blessed men who do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, who do not stand in the path of sinners, and they do not sit down to discuss um, in the seats of the scornfuls. And when you don't do these things, then what is left? There is one thing that is left to do, is, uh, to you, is the Word of God. And then you will say, that's what I'm going to do. What a beautiful promise, Lord, that is. is let me see it. What, how beautiful the other promises is. How do you fix everything so well? And for this reason, His will is in the law of the Lord. What do I want? I want whatever the Word of God says. I want what God wants. 
Reveal to me, O Lord my God, your word, your will, so that I may walk and enjoy your promises. So the will of the man who has this pre three previous three characteristics are in the word of the of God and he studies the word of God day and night. It doesn't say that he is reading. He is studying the word of God. He cares about the word of God. There is the science who studies, who is science. The researchers, they are doing experiments. The biologists, they do not take the... We study the word of God. If you don't study the word of God, then you won't have these results in your life. What is important is that he has the word of God and he studies the word of God day and night. And this man without any doubt and only this, only this man, again without doubt, he will be like the tree planted by the rivers of water. He will bear much fruit and his fruit will abide. His leaves will will blossom and whatever he'll do God will prosper it's worth it brethren to walk in these principles of the science of governance that we may govern ourselves our family uh, or those who are close to us the church as much as it is possible according to the will of God we shouldn't walk by chance as we and desire nor according to our imagination but we should walk exactly in the will of God that is good pleasing and perfect which God will reveal to us when we study so that we may continue in it we thank God because he has given to us his word and the man who's understood this he can transform his life he can change his life. He might be like a tree that is planted away from the rivers of water. And with this firm psalm, God to make him a tree planted by the rivers of water. Is it so easy? It's completely easy. Because it's not us who are doing this, but it's God for who do is doing this for us. God is doing this. He is showing this to us through His Word. He reveals this to us through His Word. He reveals this to us through His Word. That is, He gives us wisdom. And again, He gives us prudence. That is, He gives us so that we may know what to do. And He gives us also counsel that we may desire and also the power to be able to do. So, God is the one who does everything. What do we do? We just insist and look into the perfect law of liberty so that we may be blessed since we are doers of the work of God. Not forsakeful hearers, but doers of the work of God. Amen, brethren. Do you see how easy this thing is? It's so easy. So let us not lose this opportunity. Let us not lose all these ab uh, abilities that the Word of God gives us to enjoy the glory of God here on the earth. If you don't pay attention, you might be a miserable Christian. Uh, one who groans and, and fight with people and your brothers and yourself and with God and say, Nothing is going well to me. I do not believe in God. Nothing is happening. And you still haven't understood that you are the reason of this cause, of this, of this bad. Because you have never taken the word of God to look into it, to insist in it and fight. But you want, as in a magic way, this does not exist in the word of God, things to come up well for you. Let us not deceive ourselves and not deceive others. In order to reap, you have to sow. And if you 
if you sow in the flesh, then you will reap corruption. But if you sow in the Holy Spirit, and how do we sow in the Holy Spirit? We do this through the Word of God. We do this by studying the Word of God through prayer. If you sow in the Spirit, then you will reap eternal life. Life abundant here on the earth and eternal life afterwards. For this reason, we should never go against God, but we should know that the only one who is wrong and whose fault it is, it's ourselves. But again, we shouldn't grow weary. We should be uh, oppressed and depressed by sorrow, but we should understand that it is necessary to insist and look into the perfect law of liberty, which is the Word of God. And through the Word of God, we will find the solutions of all our problems and issues. And we should remember that God does not make favors. He is right, righteous. He cannot stop being righteous, but He makes grace to man. And He's a rewarder to those who seek Him. And how will we seek Him? We will seek God in the Word of God and in prayer. In the Word of God and in our room of prayer. And then God will become rewarder to us. He is rewarder and He will become continually. Amen. Help us, our Lord. Help us to be like that. Because if God doesn't help us, 